it's ill. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. So here is the first of the seven deadly addictions. The healthcare system, the orthodox healthcare system and legal system has an addiction to certainty and predictability. Born from the addiction to control, order, and objectivity. Let me explain just a bit. Anyone who tells you, especially in this day and age, that the purpose of the legal system is justice and fairness is kidding themselves or you or both. Particularly as culture becomes more complex, the purpose of the orthodox legal system is and has been for some time to maintain control and order. The corollary in the orthodox health care system is one of the issues that was brought up this weekend. The example, and it's just a microcosm, is the extent to which conventional science and conventional medicine insists on using the same metrics to evaluate natural health care as they use to evaluate allopathic health care. It is due to an addiction, a deep addiction, to maintain control, order, and objectivity. Okay? The second deadly addiction is to formalism. It's an addiction to rules. Formalism has described, been described by one author as a habit of perversely narrow focus, crass industrialization. Does that sound like the pharmaceutical industry? The atrophy of inquiry and intellectual independence. That sounds like most judges who I appear in front of, as well as the attorneys general. Quick story. It's the anecdote there on the right. I represented an acupuncture practitioner recently. He was brought up on charges because he had a client come to him, a 70-year-old woman, who had had 10 children, five miscarriages, obviously much, many, many years earlier, as well as five automobile accidents over the course of an eight-year period of time. She had a 20-year history of significant pain. She could find no one to help her. She was on all sorts of medications. She had, as indicated in chart notes from all of her healthcare practitioners, used, among other things, meditation for pain management. My client, the acupuncture practitioner, very <coughs> steeped in his craft, acupuncture and oriental medicine. Certainly, from a professional standpoint as well as a personal standpoint, he was well-versed in meditation. This 70-year-old woman came to my client and among other things said in conversation, by the way, can you help me with my meditation? Can you give me any advice on how to enhance my meditation practice? This acupuncture stuff is good. It's working. I like it. How can you help me a little bit more? So what he did is he wrote down on a piece of paper three guidelines for how she might enhance her meditation practice. Here's what he also did, though. He wrote at the top of the page, capital R, little x, meditation. The Department of Health got a hold of this, charged him with practicing outside the scope of his acupuncture license, and sought to suspend his license for seven years. That, my friends, is a fairly succinct example of formalism, addiction to the rules. And it is uniquely afflicting this combined alloyed structure and function that is orthodox legal and healthcare systems. The next addiction is over-rationality, over addiction to reason. Reason? Do we have too much reason? A lot of folks would have a hard time with that, but let me show you what I mean. The other word for that, or the word that really captures that is hypertrophy, 
abnormal growth. Now, I mentioned that Washington State is one of the most highly regulated states uh, that I'm aware of anyway in the country, at least right now. There are 100 administrative agencies. You all know what an administrative agency is, right? Okay. Department of Labor and Industries, Department of Agriculture, Historical Commission, Washington State has the Apple Commission, of course, and the Department of Health. Every agency in Washington State has a, a booklet or pages in a larger booklet of their regulations, okay? Setting forth how they do what they do, what they do, so on and so forth. Every agency. I did a quick check, it's not scientifically accurate or objective, but I'm pretty sure it's close, that the, the regulations for the average administrative agency in Washington State number somewhere between 60 and 80 pages. Ladies and gentlemen, the regulations for the Department of Health for the state of Washington, over 1,400 pages. That's hypertrophy, okay? That's what I'm talking about. That's an addiction. That's nuts. I'm not making this up. And I, to some extent, I, I suspect you all aren't surprised either. And this is, this is what's going on. The next example is addiction to the past a.k.a. orthodoxy. Ivan Illich, who some of you maybe know as, as um, a libertarian author and social commentator, whose writings I've learned a lot from, said this. I couldn't agree with it more. Law represents the sovereign authority of the past over the present. It's used to impose a general set of ideas onto individual participants. There's actually two important comments there, one being the sovereignty of the past over the present, but also the extent of applying the general to the individual. Lo, the attorney who walks into court in front of the judge to introduce an argument that is not supported by case law precedent, an appellate decision rendered by a court in the past. If you don't have a case it's been issued in the past. 99% of the judges won't even listen to what you have to say. That's orthodoxy. Fortunately, there is that 1%. And one among that 1% in Florida, back in 1979, said this about medical orthodoxy. Orthodoxy in medicine is like orthodoxy in any other professional field. It starts out as a theory and then becomes a passionate belief in the absolute rightness of that particular view. A dissenting view is held as a criminal subversion of the truth. True? True? These oppressive forces shackle the advancement of medicine. This is nothing you don't already know. But what I'd like to impress upon you with this in the next couple of slides is the extent to which this is an addiction. There are forces out there, I believe, that know exactly what they're doing. But there are a lot more forces out there that don't know what they're doing. They are addicted. And that's what we're up against to a very large extent. The next addiction is expertise and addiction to dependence. When this country was formed, it was formed on the spirit of self-reliance, independence, and the pioneering efforts of the few who moved west, or the many who moved west eventually. That changed late in the 1800s with the advent of the Industrial Revolution. That bar of soap up there represents something that's called the Soap Wars. The soap wars were a very early and crude forerunner, I believe, to pharmaceutical advertising and marketing. What happened back in the late, late 1800s was this. As you can imagine, the homes, everybody back in those days, made soap themselves. They took care of, it's an early version of health freedom, they took care of 
their own cleanliness.